How to keep losing in poker. I recently made a tweet or a thread on Twitter that was very well received. And I want to share this with you here in case you have missed it. And also add some additional thoughts and maybe additional points that you need to do in order to keep losing in poker. But of course, if your intention is to win, then you shouldn't be doing these. And let's get right into the content. The first thing, believing you have a strong mindset and discipline, therefore not needing bankroll management. That's very typical. A lot of people overestimate their own abilities. It will go wrong heavily if you believe you don't need to put in the time or you don't need to dive deeper into understanding the variance or that you have a very strong mindset because you've been beating your, your homies in, in home games and therefore, yeah, you can, you can skip bankroll management and uh, maybe play with a 10 or 20 buy in bankroll management this will go horribly wrong. The second, constantly watching poker videos, poker streams, consuming poker. And listen, if you do it for fun, fine, fair enough. But if you have the intention to get better, not good. Be more selective, quality trumps quantity, watch fewer streams, but then also try to maybe pause or re-watch it, try to apply some, some concepts. Of course, if you don't have the money to sign up for a course, totally understandable. You can consume the free content that is available on, on the internet. Again, don't watch too many streams, too many videos, just reduce it and try to really apply the learnings, try to understand it. The best way is always to explain it to others and then you will really grasp of what is being taught in those videos. You don't need to study so many things at once take it slow, but you will see great results very soon. Focusing on minor EV bluff catching scenarios instead of grasping the power of proper value bets, especially amongst low stakes, mid stakes players who intensify their studying when it comes to calling down hero calls. It's, it's utterly crazy to me. Why would you spend so much time on things that have so little EV? Of course, you need to dedicate some time into that. I'm not saying never study at all, because it will also help you to understand poker in, in the grand scheme of things. And you can apply that knowledge onto other spots, especially when it's about bluffing yourself. But be very careful, be very mindful about it. The biggest driver for all win rate are proper value betting, getting it in good with your uh, with your hands preflop, playing solid preflop ranges, playing a very good short stack poker preflop and post flop, being able to make good laydowns. That's where you need to study these bluff catching spots and really ask yourself: Is my opponent really going to have these amount of bluffs in reality? But then also ICM, like I would 70, 80% focus on these and maybe 5, 10, 15% study those bluff catching scenarios. Listen, the better your fundamentals, the more advanced, the more it can shift to those a little more minor AV spots. But in these days, every year we discover new things. Just think about the ICM preflop ranges for all sorts of or all different stages of a tournament, how much there's to learn, studying money bubble spots, also from bigger fields that are very hard to study. There's just so much opportunity with way less effort to get a much bigger reward. And your day only has 24 hours, so you wanna pick the cherries and invest your time wisely to get the maximum output and the maximum return. The big 2023 poker report. I'm gonna be sharing more than 30 exploits and tips how you can crush on all stakes in 2023. Based on all the research and findings we have discovered over the last one to two years with the new ICM ranges for early stages, middle stages, tips for ICM, money bubble, final tables, preflop, remember in the term masterclass, We've been doing a massive population analysis. And based on that, I'm gonna be sharing a lot of exploits and tips. I'm gonna be sharing some of them with you and you will find this soon, the entire list as an update for the tournament masterclass. And it's perfect for those of you who wanna solidify and manifest that in a very comprehensive list and take the game to the next level and have an overview of all the exploits that can be perfectly used for a refresh or warm up for the session, learn even more things, or those who might not have that much time to go in depth in all that study material and videos. So you have a very quick overview on all the exploits with explanations, with examples, and all of that is gonna be coming very, very soon. So you better not miss out on signing up for that poker report coming very soon and now enjoy the content. Constantly making big hero calls on, on low stakes, mid stakes, you know how I approach things. I'm 
always advising make good laydowns, protect your tournament life. And this is where you really punt off a lot of money. It hurts your win rate if you make these stupid hero calls. Very often, because you cannot control your ego, you feel pushed around. This really hurts your win rate and will make you losing in poker. Overpacing as a big stack, getting too euphoric, getting too aggressive. I see that a lot where people, I need to three right here. No. Also slowing down, maybe letting your image play in your favor when you already have an aggressive image. Something I see uh, amongst our students also very often. It's probably more a mindset thing than a game theoretical understanding, but something you should work on if you can uh, see yourself in these situations to overpace as a big stack. Feeling bullied against aggressive opponents, feeling triggered emotion, unable to control your emotions, also very common requires some work on your mindset to dive a little deeper where this is coming from. Very often also people get very scared and freeze when someone else plays very aggressive or you overreact, you get triggered, you don't really know how to cope with it and you start doing all sorts of random things. Even though your opponent might just play a very reasonable aggressive strategy and he's not doing it against you. Taking things personal in poker will also make you lose money. Not having poker buddies to study with, surround yourself with like-minded people and things will be a lot easier. Of course, you also need to study things on your own, discover things on your own, make your own experiences, but it will facilitate the process of becoming a professional poker player or at least making some money with poker. Constantly switching format, also very self-explaining. You need to give it a bit of time. My experience, not everyone, a lot of poker players are for a couple of weeks tournaments, couple of weeks spins, then cash game. Stick to it for a little while, put in the time to study it properly. Also design it in a way that it fits your schedule, your environment, pick a format, stick to it, and then maybe after half a year, year, sit down, reevaluate how much do you enjoy and how much should you get out of it? Can you imagine doing it another year? Just randomly switching format will really hurt your win rate. I encourage though everyone, if you have established yourself, let's say as a tournament player, to perhaps mix in some cash games to also practice your post-flop game. Just low stakes, just practice some deeper post-flop cash game spots or sitting goals to practice your ICM understanding and heads up play and shorthanded play. That makes sense once you've established yourself as a winning player, but not at the very beginning where you need to get in those reps and you really need to start building some experience. Blame variance and rank structure. I think we know all know these poker friends that we don't really want to be, want to be around with and just blame bad beats. Oh, I just got sucked out again. It's annoying. Nobody wants to hear it. It's very toxic self-talk. It's not going to help you. And yeah, you should probably just work on that uh, and, and get rid of this very bad mindset. Financial pressure, only pursue poker's career with enough money on the side to rely on something other than poker winnings. Also very self-expanding financial pressure and poker is really, really bad. Again, if you play for fun, that's all right. Don't listen to that. Don't watch that video. But if you want to take it serious and you have financial pressure, you have a huge disadvantage you have no imagination. You play against a lot of players who either play for fun and don't fucking care, or you play against a bunch of regulars that do have proper bank mention, don't have the financial pressure. Maybe they're younger or they're a lot more experienced, have already established themselves, or go down on limits if it results in less financial pressure, but do not play poker with the intention to make money when you have all sorts of debts or you haven't saved up enough money, you run from months to months. Make a plan. If you can't afford it yet, work towards it, whatever you drop in. Try to save up some money, $50, $100, $200 bankroll, and start very, very low. It's super important to just focus on the game, focus on the studying, focus on the learning, not constantly running around, oh my God, I cannot afford making this bluff. I cannot afford making this hero call. I really need to run this in this tournament deep in order to be able to pay my rent next month. That's terrible. Don't do that. You are going to lose even more money. Poor diet and poor sleep will result in not being able to control your emotions as when you would be well rested and well fed and would have nurtured yourself with the energy that it requires to stay strong and focused in a very emotionally challenging environment such as it such as this poker so if you take it here if you have long grinds prepare the food make sure you have good Sleeping patterns. I know as a poker player, we very often go late to bed. It's also not ideal, but at least get the right amount of sleep. And then when you sleep, at least the best quality. Um, you can Google it. There's a lot of great information around there uh, when it comes to sleep hacks or the right sleep environment. Don't want to dive too deep onto that, but I can only encourage you to really take it serious. In fact, for myself, this year, sleep has the highest priority, and I really hope 
I get it right and get much better sleep. Especially when you start getting over 30 and then towards the 35s and 40s. Probably some of the boomers here and the older generation can relate to that. In your 20s, your body is a little bit more forgiving. So yeah, see how it works for you. If you feel like you have some tilt issues, anger issues, or you cannot really concentrate well, I would always look first at sleep and diet. Being scared of money on final tables, also something that can have some past issues, some traumas within that is worth looking into. Or of course, some bankroll management issues where you're just playing way too high and you're constantly running deep. It's like sometimes, somehow the money gets too important. Yeah, of course, sometimes we play some main events where there's a lot of money at stake. It should be the exception. Usually you should feel fine. You should be able to risk your tournament life in a spot where uh, you don't have the best hand, maybe as a bluff or as a reshuffle or in preflop. If you're not able to do this, if you feel like, I, I don't want to bust in a stupid way, something to, to worth look into again. I, the, the purpose of this whole list is also just steer you in the right direction. Things I have experienced with my students and now it's up to you to pick the ones and maybe then do further more research. But also you can, of course, ask questions on uh, these every, every of these topics, whether it's in YouTube comments or in our disc. I would recommend Discord. It's much easier to have a conversation there. And also you have 30,000 other poker players being able to provide input. I think uh, there would be at least someone who can resonate very well with you and can give you some very good insight. Being impatient in the early middle stages, tournaments are not being won in the early stages. The early stage is probably the most boring stages. You just wait for good hands. You play very tight, very straightforward. Later, late, later stages, picking your opponents, playing more aggressive selectively will become way more important. People don't really care in the early stages feel like a lot of players are not adjusting enough um, try to play way more boring in the early stages i'm pretty sure that can also help you win more money chasing loss not being able to take breaks kind of like resonates or goes hand in hand with tilting right having this frustration i need to whether it's especially in cash game i'm down five buy-ins ten buy-ins i need to win it back and then i will stop no you should always decide no matter how much you are but how much you don't if you don't feel like playing anymore if you don't enjoy it anymore if you're not focused if you start feeling tired i mean the exception it's like super, 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 super soft game and you know you're going to be plus EV even though you haven't slept in the past two weeks, right? But usually, please take it with a little bit of context here. You want to stop the moment you don't feel well anymore. Take a break and try to also discover where this is really coming from. This this, this not being able to take breaks can kill your entire bankroll. Winner's tilt, playing too aggressively and recklessly on upswings goes hand in hand with playing too aggressive as a big stack. I think a lot of wrecks actually have to deal with that. Something I've experienced that when wrecks had a huge score and also myself, like I'm not saying I'm perfect in all these spots. I also need to work on these, that it's you're more prone to make some more loosey goosey plays, right? Uh, so if you do it too much, if you feel like it also hurts your win rate, then stop doing it. The other way, number two, not putting in the volume when things are going well because you're too afraid of losing your winnings. I think it should speak of itself. I don't think it's not necessarily smart to always stop to protect your winnings. Discover it. What, what, what is happening there? Like, why are you so afraid? Usually it's also something with connecting your past. I can always recommend for these kind of things to, to work with a mindset coach, something that is holding you back. Because poker is, is very beautiful in terms of giving you a mirror and showing you all the problems that you also might face in life or triggers that you might face in life that in similar situations in life, business, relationships, facing similar problems like poker is just a mirror of our lives. It's worth really looking into because it also will help you in other areas of life. Even if you say, okay, I don't want you to pursue your poker career, but you realize, wow, this, this, this is something I really have a problem with. Like that I don't want to put in the volume. I don't want to play. I want to protect my winnings. Something is off you. Something is wrong, right? It's not healthy. We all are different. I understand. It's, it's fine also to being a bit protective. But when it gets so far that you literally stop playing for days and, or you decrease your volume significantly, that's usually where you want to put in the volume. You're on a good run. You have good confidence. Things are going well. It's not necessarily, it doesn't mean that the upswing can hit right away, right? I don't believe it on this. Like you're on a good run and it, we need to take advantage of. No, more in terms of you have the confidence. It's easier for you to uh, cope with bad beats because you're an optimist. Like, All right, fine, we'll take a bad beat. It's you're going to be more likely to play and execute your A game on upswing days versus downswing days. It's just very, very normal. So try to work on that and see where this is coming from and how you can overcome it. Chasing draws because you're curious. I think that's a very fishy trade. You shouldn't be doing it. 
odds and outs? Is it mathematically justified to make a call or not? Don't be curious unless you play for fun, of course, but uh, chasing draws for the sake of curiosity is something I would not advise and will certainly cost you a lot of money. And ultimately the final one, this list, it was so obvious to me, I didn't even list, put it in the Twitter, is tilting, right? Doesn't need further explanation, don't tilt, work on your anger management. And the final piece of advice I can give you if you have serious anger and tilt issues, get good sleep, diet, work out, and have good relationships. Yes, it sounds so overwhelming. I have seen a lot of comments on Twitter. Well, I don't know anyone who has these traits. Well, then you should probably reconsider your circle of friends to begin with. But also, of course, it's not easy. It sounds simple. It's not easy. Otherwise, everyone would be who has the access to the resources. Don't get me wrong. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people who cannot afford that. But majority especially when you can watch this video, you will have access to food, you will have access to bed, and it's in your damn responsibility to get these things right and then do additional work. Maybe a mindset course, a mindset coach, talking to friends, whatever it is, watching YouTube videos, trying to, reading books, applying the concepts, whatever it is to change habits, atomic habits as a book, for example. But I don't think it's worth really doing it when you have poor sleep, poor diet. It's gonna be so much harder. I mean. You're struggling with something. Again, what I've seen also in social media, people, yeah, why, like, let people do their thing. Well, people come to me telling me, Ben, I have tilt issues, I have anger issues, I tilt in poker, I tilt in life, what is wrong with me? And I see a very repeti repetitive theme here. If you're happy, if you don't want to become a pro, if you don't want to become super successful, that's great, that's fine, I'm not talking to you. Maybe you can still take some inspiration from it. Whatever, it's fine. I'm not trying to convince someone. I'm talking to those who struggle, who are lost, that come to me, Ben, I read a gazillion amount of books and cannot change anything. And when I talk to them, how is your sleep? How is your diet? Yeah, mostly ordering food. I'm going to bed at 4 a.m., waking up at 10 or 11, getting five, six hours of sleep, completely burnt out, not having fulfilling relationships. Well, what a surprise, right? And this is science. And now in these days, everyone tries to overcomplicate things so much. I don't wanna go on another end, but when you have some serious issues in terms of emotional control, which is super important, to poker sleep well eat well have good friends and move your body and work out on a regular it doesn't require a lot of time it is really really simple of course it will be a little bit difficult to let go of bad habits and to implement good habits take your time it's a lifelong journey i also have phases where i fucked up sleep sleep and i fail for weeks and then i need to come back sit down and reevaluate the situation. How can I change my environment in order to get good sleep again? I don't get this victimhood and give up mentality of people. Oh, this is like way too much of expect. These are the most fundamental things. In what position are you to give up on these and not work for it and fight for it? I don't get it. That's not the life I want to live. And honestly, this is my opinion. And I'm free to share that here. Of course, I do think that 99% of the people that think they don't need that or whatever, and are not happy, actually need that, and I just don't wanna put in the time. It's just a very self-destructive behavior to distract yourself. That's how I see it. I hope you took some inspiration from it. If you have any other questions or you would add anything else on the list, feel free to drop in the comments. I see you guys excited to chat with you in Discord or whether it's in YouTube, and then see you guys next time.